something, but in your own good time. I don't know that I have good time. I did see something very, very funny on Facebook this morning. Oh, yeah? What's that? I think it was a uh, follower guy whose channel is called Storm of Steel Wargaming. Let's see if I can... The personal blog. And his post was two hours ago, and it was a question from his wife. What happens when you've painted all the soldiers? His response was, I'm guessing 50 rolling on the floor laughing emoticons. answer could there be? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I showed it to Jo. She, she snorted. I'm going to post this. I actually don't know where I'm going to post this, but... Into Discord. It's a good spot. Demon World General. There we go. So, yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, Todd's telling us he's good. Good. I um I did a little bit of design work while I was away, just cause. So any bets what that might be? Assuming you can see it. No. Haven't lost yet, have I? Morning, Grant. Maddie's gone quiet. I'll put some goggles on and cover the silence with silence. So we'll just continue these guys. Some army paint of barbarian flesh.
Hello, Dan. Hello. You're back. So here's the fun thing, Dan. Mm -hmm. I'm only hearing you through the stream audio. You're not transmitting at all through Discord, it feels like. So maybe oh, I'm just really? going to turn off Discord and then uh, we'll see go. what happens. Technical difficulties. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, yes. But it appears to be that Discord's not picking me up. Hold on. What about now? I hear you now. Right. Um, so, Discord had a fart at my end. I'm glad it wasn't mine. <laughs> mm. In the middle of a stream sometimes. Or a conversation or whatever. Mm. Which we were. Technical difficulties. Wouldn't be a live stream without them. God, don't say that. <laughs> I mean, right after this, I'm running Earth Dawn for a group of people I've l largely never played with. Wow. Back to Earth Dawn. Yeah, I guess. We'll see. Been a fair while. It has been a little while since I've played it. It's been longest since I've played it as a player. Hmm. Are you playing it as a player or are you running it? I'm running it. Yeah. Grant wants to know what Earth Dawn is. It's um it's a role playing game, which is owned by Farsa and published by Farsa. And is probably their biggest money spinner at the moment. Yeah, not probably. Well, I don't have the figures. Trust me on the not probably. <laughs> Does Grant know what Shadowrun is? Uh, no, but he think or thought that Fast is still on Battletech, so... Yeah, fast oh, okay. forward a few years. <laughs> yeah, like two decades. Hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, Earth Dawn is loosely originally related to Shadowrun, uh, an earlier age of magic. Sword and board, high fantasy. Um, you know, an ancient Earth. It has its strengths, and it has some weaknesses, in my opinion. I like that it's a comprehensive setting where all all of the game mechanical stuff actually has a reason for existing. I don't like that you need to buy three editions, well, three editions worth of books in order to get all the history.
Oh, you're right about that, Grant. Shadowrun is basically fantasy meets cyberpunk. Tolkien fantasy, especially. Meets uh, William Gibson's Neuromancer. That's what it is at its heart. And punches it in the face, then robs it and leaves it in the gutter. And sprays an anarchist symbol graffiti on the nearby wall. On the nearby wall, yeah. Okay, Earthdawn has dwarves, so he approves. Yes, it certainly does. Dwarves are great. There's some miniatures about for it too. Some relatively recent ones that you'll probably be able to start buying soon if you feel like picking up paintbrushes of your own. What made me pick it back up? Um, a friend of mine, Max, has a, a game streaming spot on Fridays and Max is a person who's a forever game master. He never really gets to play. He just ran off, uh, just finished off last week or the week before a session in which I was a player. Um, so I'm returning the favor, letting him be the player while I can master. It's really just what that's just boiled down to. And we got some other people uh, who don't get to play as much as they want together. We're going to throw some bodies into a a voice chat. Hopefully it goes well. Hopefully. I say hopefully because I woke up about an hour before I really should have today. <laughs> uh, which, I've got this thing where I really need six, six and a half hours of sleep, otherwise I have a massive headache no matter what I do. Mm. Which is good fun. And no, I've got no, that today not. because, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be ruined for today just because I did, I got up an hour earlier. Mind you, it was bright out at 4.30 a.m. Yes. And I mean, we're not even near the solstice. It's ridiculous. Uh, if you ignore Victoria's weather for the last week, we are headed for summer. <laughs> it's actually been very pleasant here. Like last weekend, it was like in the low 30s, but through the week, it's been about 25, 26. Yeah. Lucky you, we had one day of nine. Well, there you go. Phillip Island is an island. Down it south. It is. <laughs> I don't know what you're expecting, really. No, uh, no, we knew that it was going to be slightly colder and slightly wetter. Both of those anticipatory feelings were met. And someone decided this would be a good place to build a racetrack. Well, you know, I think they built a racetrack down there because it was cheap. I think the left-hand channel in my headset's finally died. Oh, well. It's back again. It's uh, like calling out the computer repairman or the re appliance repairman or the whatever. Yeah. I'm I'm a hundred percent sure it's the switch, the on off switch. And it was very cantankerous this morning. But, um, I got it to work, but I don't expect that to continue for very much longer. And I'm not in a position at the moment where I choose to spend another $350 to replace them. 
Boy, do I hear that. I kind of wanted to go in on that recent Ralpatha sale. Mm -hmm. Except, you know, I had uh, overspent on my paycheck within three days of getting it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, periodontist. Yikes. Did I complain about that last week? I don't remember. Yeah, I don't know. So, I see the periodontist once a year because I have a, an implant tooth. Mm -hmm. um, her husband put it in. Nice bloke, but um, getting towards the end of his practicing life, he has some uh, degenerative issues, I think. Mm -hmm. not, to, not to go too into it. Uh, the missus is a lovely woman and a fully qualified and highly experienced periodontist in her own right. And two of their kids are also dentists. Well, one's a dental surgeon and the other one's a, a periodontist and it's the daughter and she's very pretty and single by the mm -hmm. seams of it. <laughs> and the daughter's taking over for the mum. And the bill's gone up a hundred bucks since this time last year. Mm. Yeah, ouch. 360 bucks for 15 minutes in the chair. Didn't have to they, do much work. Didn't they do anything? Uh, gum health measurement, uh, clean on seven teeth. Right. Um, and oral hygiene instruction was a build item as well, but at zero dollars, which is, you know, mm -hmm. I'd be upset if I had to be told for 90 bucks to brush my teeth more often. Right. Because she didn't even say that. <laughs> oh, you're doing really, really well on it. Don't, um, don't change anything in your right. dental work. You know, like, That'd be 90 okay. bucks, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Positive affirmation's expensive, damn it. Yep. Uh, so Grant comments that after COVID lockdown, he swears everything went up so businesses could try and recoup some lost revenue. I mean, you're not wrong, but inflation is a real thing as well. And that's because of COVID as well. Mm, got Quite the frankly. Point. The point was is that in order to keep the economies going during COVID while we were all stuck at home, the government spent money they didn't have. Every yeah. government spent money they didn't have. Mm -hmm. So here we are. I tell you what, though, there's been a, a real trend in the last week of articles published in... COVID lockdown propagandizing outlets yes. saying, please don't come after us because all the COVID lockdowns were a massive mistake that destroyed the world economically. <laughs> please forgive us. Don't throw us in jail for being criminally misleading. Yes. We only threw you in virtual jail for two years. Mm -hmm. Please don't hate us. Please <laughs> forgive us. We thought we were doing what was best for us. Mm -hmm. Be all right if the mistake was made once, but it wasn't. You remember 14 days to flatten the curve? Yeah. Two years, man. Two, two years. Two years. Hey. I, I lived through... And it's still going on in China. I lived through the longest lockdown on the planet, didn't I? You certainly did. Well, I think somewhere in Argentina it's technically gone longer, but certainly the biggest longest one. Hmm. And I mean, look at China. They locked up bloody Shanghai Disneyland or whatever it is with the people still inside. Right. Because detected cases and we're not allowing you out until you test negative what, three days in a row. Yeah. Mm. 
The hardest part of a two-week lockdown is week 53. <laughs> You're absolutely right, mate. <laughs> yeah. Twenty twenty two is twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty as well. <laughs> two. Twenty two. Chew, chew, chew for twenty chew, chew. Good old Richie. Ah, uh, Richie. Rest in peace, Richie Benno. Of my youth and mine, many, 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 many. Craig, it's just not the same without the old gang. It's not. I mean, T20 World Cup's going on, I just don't care. Yeah, exactly. Mind you, I don't care about T20 anyway, but still, it'd was, be something to watch. <laughs> I watched, enjoyed watching the first few seasons of Big Bash and then enjoyed the first few seasons of the women's Big Bash and I've lost interest since then. The men's game's way too polished. And the women's game's going the same way. Like, their skill levels have come up tremendously, and I think that's that's a wonderful thing. But the product itself is, I don't know. Not entertaining. Yeah, a bit plastic, a bit... I don't know, I'm getting old. Let's just leave it at that and move on. I don't think it's you. I think it is the sport. Well, a lot, a lot of people have the same problems with it. There was, and it's not just cricket, it's everything. Everything that has a commercial aspect behind it as a sporting event is going the same way because they figured out how to make money out of them, and that's the way they make money out of them. And I was watching videos during the week. Um, I'm a bit partial to some touring car racing from time to time. And I thoroughly enjoyed the touring car years in Australia from 84 till, I don't know, 92, 93 or something like that. And they homogenised it. Now, the reason they homogenised it was because um, certain manufacturers were coming in, spending great deals of money to win. You know, it was a pay-to-win type thing. Um, mm. And some had done it more than others. But, you know, we'd had three years in a row where you had to have a Ford Sierra or you weren't going to win anything. And this, then Nissan came in with the GDR Skylines and went, see, Ford, whatever you can do, we can do better. And they did. And, you know, everybody was whinging all the time about, oh my God, it's the same cars winning all the time, oh my God, do something about it. So they went, cool, we'll change the rules so that we guarantee that it's only ever the same car winning, it'll just have different paint colours. So they chopped it down to a two-make series and it had to be four doors and it had to be a V8. And it was, from then on, it just became largely a yawn fest. You know, the days where you could see, you know, a BMW up against a Volvo, up against a Mustang, up against an Alfa Romeo, up against, you know, a Jag. And they were recognisable cars. You could see them driving around on the street. All just got homogenised. They, they went in the NASCAR path. And then you have a look at modern NASCAR. They're desperately trying to come up with a formula that's going to keep people's bums on seats and entertain for two and a half hours and failing. Mm. 
Well, I have some thoughts about that that I'm not going to air publicly. <laughs> it's a bit like Formula One today. Yeah. And Grant comments, everything good, everything starts as a good idea, becomes a business and ends up a racket. Uh, that's not far from the truth. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, all car racing has gone the same way, basically. Yeah. Unless you've got some really, really old school, golden oldies, classic stuff. But I think this is why the Goodwood Revival or the Goodwood Members Meetings do so well. Because people dig those classics out and race them and they're, they're really racing them so do you want to see a mark one jag up against a mark one cortina there you go marvel at how bad those cars really handled <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, you also have to acknowledge that it wasn't, quote, better because people died and that's not better. So, you know, modern motorsport is definitely safer, but that doesn't mean it's necessarily more entertaining. I mean, that's probably one of the reasons why people aren't watching NASCAR anymore. Mm. They liked watching the crashes. Yep. Oh, the crashes still happen. They're just not quite so catastrophic for the person inside the car. I watched another video about why they shortened the, um, the drag strips in America. They did? Yeah, they're not quarter mile anymore. They're a thousand foot. Oh, yeah. What's the point? Well, the point I is... I guess because people only watch the first poofteenth of a second. No. The point is, is by the time they get and the to cars are gone. the quarter mile, the cars are going so fast that they can't stop them. Oh, did I get censored? I don't know. Did you? Oh, the video just dropped out. Hmm. Maybe NASCAR are listening. Someone's listening. <laughs> Someone's always listening. No, they had some really, really catastrophic accidents because the cars were literally going so fast. By the time they got to the finish line, you know, they were up... Any up to the, was the 360, 370 miles an hour mark. Something stupid. Anyhow. So, yeah. Yeah, stream dropped out. Yep. And it kicked me out to advertising. Oh, lovely. For news.com.au. Really? Really, it had a little girl sitting facing into a webcam and typing. <laughs> I don't think that's appropriate at all. The Anthology complaint. <laughs> yeah, well. No one listens. Except I those that are listening. <laughs> <laughs> I report people on Twitter all the time. Yeah. Nobody cares. Not even in this newfound age of um, alleged equality. <laughs> what you need to do is to get the um, complaint to go viral.
Well, yeah, that's probably easy enough. At Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At libs of TikTok. At libs of TikTok. At libs of TikTok. At libs of TikTok. Mm -hmm. Who are they? Oh, uh, it's a Twitter account that reposts American liberals TikTok videos. Oh right. God, they must be riveting. They're Ooh. they're looking to disturb minds. Does the Vatican have a TikTok account? Wouldn't be surprised. I'm not actually looking it up. <laughs> I'm trying to find replacement parts for a coffee brewer of mine, which you, died you, during the week. You broke a coffee brewer. Uh, oh, fair wear and tear. Right. The seal's in it a shot. It's actually generating too much pressure. It's incredibly hard to to plunge. It's not a blown seal, it's just an ice cream. <laughs> One of my favourite childhood jokes. Mm -hmm. Damn. Damn? Yeah. They um, don't have any seals listed as spare parts. I don't really want to have to buy an entirely new one because it's gone up. 33%, I guess, Ouch. since I bought it. So here's the thing. Well, it's a little bit of a rant. Rant away. So, not everybody knows the correct name of things. You know, I include myself in this. There, is, there are certain items in the house that you use every day without thinking about them, and you don't know what they're called. You know, and the example I'm working with in my head at the moment is, is that I chose a daughter-in-law, eldest son's wife, it's on her own at the moment because son is in the US for work. I actually think he's home, home, no, he's home tomorrow. Anyhow, had a door fail, door mechanism fail. So you could turn the handle, but the door didn't open because the tongue didn't retract because the mechanism was broken because said door was the door to the laundry and the laundry is the timeout room. They have four kids, so... The timeout room door gets slammed because 
what do children do when they're going to time out other than vent their frustration at their parent on said door. Anyhow, so the mechanism mm-hmm. failed. Do you think I could, despite a significant amount of experience at attempting to search Google for said things, do you think I could find whether or not the local hardware place had replacements? No. I don't think they sell, you know, they anything do. less than complete locks. No, they do. Really? And I, I know this because we went there yesterday and went through the shelves and found them. They're a $6 item. They're really cheap. But do you think I could find it on their website? No. <laughs> Hey, well, I was I've got some, <laughs> I was you, expecting to have to pay thirteen dollars fifty for a replacement set of door handles so I could throw the handles away and just use the mechanism. Now I mean thirteen dollars fifty you're like who gives a shit? But the fact is is that they do sell spares available by themselves but I don't know what they're called. I put in door handle mechanism. I got nothing. What else would you call it? Search me. Well, if I searched you, I think I'd probably have a better chance of getting an answer because you certainly didn't get an answer off the Bunnings website. But it's not the first time I've gone searching for things, you know, on theirs and and other people's websites. where I don't know exactly what it's called and I can't find it. And unless you know exactly what it's called, you won't find it which is useless. It really is. So the question is, what actually is it called? I don't know. I still don't know. <laughs> you still... <laughs> oh, my God, you've actually bought them and you still don't know what it's called. No. Well, it didn't say on it what it was. Well, there you go, then. It doesn't have a name. Right, so... When I when I go searching next time, it'll be that unnamed thing I bought last time. I still reckon I'll probably not get very much out of that search either. You got a Bunnings account? No, I refuse to. Good for you, but it would have told you if you had one. No, uh, really? That thing I bought last time. Right. Oh, no, <laughs> because I didn't <laughs> buy it online. I physically went. I don't know. I mean, hmm. even buying it in store, if you've got an account, they'll right. add it to your purchase history. Right. You know, it's just like a rewards card from a supermarket. They yes. track all your purchases for marketing purposes mm-hmm. and offer you a tiny fraction of a dollar of, I don't know, potential rewards. Potential rewards. Yeah, well, inflation has struck those even worse than it has the dollar. I, I think, I don't know. The, the point of the whole rant was is that implement Every- a search engine that can spread the search laterally to go, we don't have anything like that. Did you mean... Perhaps, and make some damn suggestions. You don't get that on that particular website. You get, no, no idea what you're talking about. Oh, that is true. I've mistyped superglue into the Bunnings search engine once and came up with nothing. Mm Mm-hmm. I think it was an extra P. Supper glue. Supper glue. Mm. It's a new dieting tool. <laughs> Tasty and delicious. <laughs> it's like an improved version of peanut butter. It really is going to stick your tongue to the roof of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and Grant comments, I bought something on special I wasn't going to buy, so I saved money. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely uh, true. Absolutely true. I actually appreciate um, eBay search engine a little bit more. Because it says, we have no idea what the fuck you are smoking. Buy these things instead. Uh. Sadly, I did a whole lot of making Jeff Bezos richer during the week. Many people do. They just appeared to have everything at better prices than everybody else. And free shipping. And believe me, free shipping's a big fucking deal here. Yeah, true. True. You go, standard shipping from England, 40 pounds. And you go... $80. Oh, that's, yeah, that's 15 80. times the price of what I'm buying. $80. <laughs> and they go, Australia's a long way from England. <laughs> yes, yes it is. But it's not that far. Going to the moon. Speaking of which, the parcel that uh, RPE sent me that made my way back to RPE is on its way again. Oh, good. You get the tracking information on it this time. I did. When I checked it yesterday morning, it was in Singapore. Well, there you go. The difference was they sent it FedEx, not British Post. Well, they're massively on strike. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they have good reasons. Reasons that are good to them, anyway. Everything is so damned expensive. All we want is a lousy cost of living adjustment. Can't afford those. God. So a great cartoon yesterday. There's a, a boss saying to an employee, you want a wage rise? I can't afford that. And she's saying, perhaps you should get a second job. <laughs> I've made quips like that. Like my old man watches the news, the TV mm. news, and he gets angry. And he com one of his big complaints is young people not being able to afford their new mortgage repayments because, you know, a 10% interest rate rise on when they took their loan for a huge amount of money. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you want them to do? Get a third job? Mm -hmm. Or fourth. So this is the thing, right? My parents, when they they built their house in the end of the 70s, the early 80s, they had a mortgage that was $70,000. My parents' mortgage in 83 was 140000 Yeah. You so, could afford it then. Well, I mean, my parents if went you're through that. To, if you're willing to work it off, you could afford to pay off a mortgage. Yeah, but my Reasonable parents went through that yeah. ugly... That ugly interest rate period in Australia where it went to eighteen and a half percent. Yeah, now, dad, so dad only I... earned forty five grand a year, so they struggled. They nearly lost that house. I know people that did lose their houses. However, eighteen and a half percent of eighty versus ten percent of nine hundred. What's this nine hundred thousand you're talking about? Try one point seven. Yeah, that's right. Depends on where you you live, and this is the other thing. It's like oh, buy a house where you can afford to, and it's like okay, uh, so what you don't spend on the house, you spend on transport, because those places are 
miles away. You know, it's. I don't think you can buy anything within two hours of Brisbane for less than five hundred anymore. No. No. Andrea's youngest daughter bought a house with her partner mm -hmm. uh, early early this year for one point seven million, mm -hmm. and it was a real fixer upper. Yep, probably falling into the street. Yep, and he's a pharmacist, and she's fairly well paid in some sort of marketing thing. Mm -hmm. Probably combined income of three hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. They're struggling. Yep. I think they've already cut the avocado toast out of the diet. <laughs> <laughs> if it be three months ago, you wanted lettuces. Like, you yeah. have to put another mortgage on your house to get a lettuce. Uh, Grant's commented, I asked where something was at the local hardware store and the young lass quipped, how can you wander around and buy stuff you don't need if I tell you where the thing you need is? <laughs> True. <laughs> this, is, uh, this is shopping centre theory. Uh, design theory. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. The Maya Centre in Brisbane, in the CBD, is a great example of this. It has escalators leading to random places that only go one way. They're not paired for mm -hmm. bi-directional travel. Yeah. So you have to kind of wander past every store in the entire place trying to find the way out. And it has like three different street level exits on three different floors, which is also confusing. <laughs> I hate places like that. Of course you do. You get lost in them. And when you get lost, you look around and you see, oh, that looks interesting. I might buy that. That's the plan. I just get irritated. It is the and plan. never go back. Last time I went into that particular building, I had to come through a, um, I actually had to transit through a, a craft store, you right. know, fabrics, yep. glue guns, glitter, that sort mm. of thing, because that's where the only downward escalator went. Right. It went literally right to that front door. Right. I'm like, oh my God, how do I get out of here? Oh, yeah, it's around there, 15 metres over there. But you got to do a maze of fabric. Yeah. Right. Getting lost in the aisle with the drag queen merkins. <laughs> yeah. It's like the Australia Post gauntlet of kids' toys you have to wait in line for, buy for, for 10 minutes with a toddler. <laughs> Ten God. minutes. Ten minutes. Good grief. You must be having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely got a bit slap happy with some of this paint last week. Oh boy. So I won't ask what else you painted this week. <laughs> <laughs> the town red. No, there were no paint brushes taken to Phillip Island. So I did a little bit of work on interceptor. Did a little bit of work on wooden walls. Yeah, you were showing off your wooden walls during the. Uh... The, technical the, difficulties. The technical difficulties, yes. That's all right. I'll rewatch this stream at some point in the future and catch everything you said. Hmm. I didn't say much. Now 
no hilarious jokes, sadly. I made one or two when I thought you'd disappeared. Right. I don't think I was being picked up by the stream, was I? So, nope. Probably for the best. Right, eh? Stick number eight. So, I took the new laptop away with me, obviously. Mm. And because I'd built it up from scratch, I'd used latest versions of software for things doing installations and stuff like that. And I was like about day two and Joe's like, how's the new laptop? And I'm like, you know what? It's not as good as I expected it to be. And, you know, went on to explain why the software that I was using, Inkscape, wasn't behaving very well. And I sort of persevered a little bit and then went, you know what? This is ridiculous. So I did a little bit of searching on the internet, discovered the newest versions of Inkscape have a really nasty performance problem only on Windows. Mm. So uninstalled that version, went back to two versions prior, and voila, all of a sudden, new laptop is performing like a charm. And it's like, wow, how do you take a piece of hardware that powerful and turn it into a pig just with a software bug. I don't know, but video game developers manage it all the all time. The time. Hi, yes. When you're trying to do, you know, animation and stuff, complicated animations and lots of it in real time, sure, I can see that. All this was doing is redrawing some bloody graphics after you make an edit. Actually, it wasn't even that. It was scrolling. It's like, it was just an absolute dog. I think it's time for another antihistamine. Mm. This year has been literally the worst ever for me for hay fever. Yes. It's... Like last year, I got it a little bit, and that was the first time ever in my life. Mm. This year? Oi. Yeah. Been like three months. <laughs> Spent a couple of hours outside yesterday adjusting the retaining wall because the gate wouldn't open. Because we've had so much damned water in the last month that everything swelled and moved. Mm -hmm. And you've got fairly reactive soil, haven't you? Well, we're on reactive I, clay, so... That would have been good, hard, hard fun work. I say sarcastically. <laughs> well, I got a router out, a router bit and routed it because doing it by hand was not getting me very far. I can prove that they're red gum sleepers, though. <laughs> I 
All right. On to black. Oh, that's not black. That is. So you finally started the dragon. I have. I finally started the dragon. Has it done your head in yet? Not yet. There is going to be a lot of cleanup on this base coat, I think. Mm. So, two primary colors black and dark, dark blue. Mm -hmm. And then I'm hitting it with one of those Turbo Dork color shifting paints to get mm. a metallic blue slash metallic purple. There's I don't think there's any metallic purple in the damn thing. Right. It just reflects blue. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the black and the blue went on all right. I found a nice colour for the open mouths of the dragon. Threw that in there. And then I started on bone. It's absolutely covered in spikes, this dragon, all the yeah. way down to bone. <sighs> Those are not as neat as they could be. Right. But it's also really, really awkward, as you well know. I've not got that model, actually. No, but the other dragons are also fairly awkward. Oh, yeah. This one, its wings go up at like 60 degree angles from yeah. the vertical, so they're fairly well well, relatively near each other at the top, yep, and it's yep. hard to get in between the wings. Yep. Yeah. So I'll probably do a couple more coats of the bone spike color and then try to touch up around them and then... Mm -hmm. Go back to the metallics, or the colour shifting metallics. Fortunately, I've already done the rider. I did that with those, uh, com excuse me, those commanders I posted last night. Yeah, right. And then that's it. I have no more Isthak. The end I'll of have the actually Isthak. finished something. <laughs> I mean, technically, I've already finished the Isthak. It's a Dark Elf Dragon, but... Well, you know. It'll be Isthak by the time I'm done with it. Excellent. And then I think I might take a swing at some Wood Elves. Next. Cool. I found a... Um, a scheme I like and I want to try it out a little bit. Do a couple of tester models. Yeah, one or two. I've got a jam jar full of 100% alcohol and lots of flecked off paint. <laughs> I imagine it'll be getting a workout. Right. Yeah, I'm actually thinking instead of white and green highlights, primarily blues. Mm -hmm. Not that I've got a lot of blues. I've got more metallic blues than I have blue blues. That's but blues and pale skin and shiny silver. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good to me. 
and brown hair. Why not? Exactly. Like all of my dark elves have got the same blonde hair, so I mm -hmm. figure it's just going to be one of those things. Not like my anime hair ice witches. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Pinks and blues and boy. That did not go well. I think I would have a really, really hard time with stands like this. I have a hard enough time getting in between legs on a miniature I can pick up and rotate. Mm -hmm. Never mind having you know ten more standing next to it. This is an ex so it's an exquisite torture. Is what happened just then was just that I managed to bump the top of the bristles of the brush against the platform and it turned the bristles and mm. painted stuff I didn't want painted. Speaking of stuff that you don't want painted, mm -hmm. did you see the War and Peace newsletter that came out yesterday? Yes. I was kind of hoping Clee would be here so I could ask him a question. About? <laughs> About the, what is it, 1500 bucks of Skaven that they've got up for sale? Oh, old, old Hammer Skaven? The Old Hammer Skaven, yeah. And the 2500 bucks in Old Hammer Bretonians that I thought, oh, oh, oh God, maybe if I was flush with cash. <laughs> it's just one of those weird coincidences. You got two armies that we both like. Yeah. Just turning up at the same point at the same time. Like, oh. <laughs> I must admit, I didn't even look at the, the old Hammer stuff. Oh, the Skaven stuff is 1500 and yeah. 2500 for the Bretonian. And sure, it's missing some pieces, and it's all said that it's missing pieces here and there and what they are missing, but fairly big deals. Yep. Are they worth the money, though? Depends on how much you like old hammer. Yeah. So, Bretonians. I mm. um, sidestepped them. I still wanted knights, but I didn't want to pay those prices. So I got myself some Victrix Normans. Which is a fake side of the pond, isn't it? <laughs> what? Normans? Normandy French. and Brittany mm, okay. are kind of next to each other. Because Brittany's in France. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's effectively what the Bretonians are. They're just yeah. generic sort of knights. French. Fair French knights. <clears throat> I don't know why. I'm really struggling with this. Not because it's quite difficult and that you've had a week off and it's also a little bit mind-numbing. And you're trying to hold on a conversation, you distract your painting. No, it's just 
I don't know. You know, you, you made the comment earlier that you woke up an hour earlier with a headache. Mm. Um, I'm struggling with one as well. And for some reason, doing these boots is just not going as easily as like I remember it going for the French. split a hair right out of the brush. Tool abuse of my stomach. It's very angry with me. You need something to eat. Yeah. Just unusual. Normally I don't eat until after the live stream. I know. Today I appear to be paying the price for the decision. Well, you've been at it for an hour. I don't think anyone would be too offended if you took some time off for your own well-being. If you wanted to call it quits here, I don't think Grant or I would mind. I wouldn't. I hope Grant wouldn't. And I'm not saying that because I got another obligation in an hour. I'm just saying, you know, you got to look after yourself. Yeah. I was and hoping to get through two colours, damn it. Haven't you? <laughs> uh, well, no, face and Flesh hand. and black. Well, okay. Black on one stick. There's only seven to go. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's up to you, but... Yeah. Well, we'll see how we go with this stick. The other thing is, is the paint's not behaving the way that I expected it to behave. Normally, this miniature painter's paint flows a little bit better than this. Yeah, I was going to say, it didn't look right. No. And we're having to use the water to get it to flow, and that's just a bit weird. Mm. Dried out wet palette, maybe. You haven't used it. Yeah, I, I rehydrated it this morning, so... Mm. Dried out. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, it did come out of the paint pot a little bit strange. Normally it sort of flows, and today it came out as a blob. So, I wonder. So... It's a little bit of a controversy. Uh -huh. Yesterday on Instagram, one of the people that I follow wrote an article about one of the other people that I follow, and they were making the point that the second crowd did videos very early on about army painter speed paints and then citadel's contrast paints might have even been the other way around uh. subsequently it turns out that this individual apparently was working with Vallejo on Vallejo's version of them. Quick paints mm -hmm. or whatever Vallejo are calling them. Didn't mention at the time they were doing said videos that this is in fact what they were doing. Leading people to believe that 
the negative criticism they levelled at the other manufacturer's attempts may not have been impartial and that there may have actually been a conflict of interest there. To which that particular individual has responded with what I can only describe as verbal abuse, personal attack, And I, know, well, I, underst I understand that it that <laughs> offense, offense is often a good defense, but I would have thought that the right thing to do would have been to disclose that, oh, and hey, you know, I'm actually part of a team that's working on a competing product. So, yeah. Well, um, if that was the case at the time, I don't know the timeline for this. No. Um, and as you well know, non-disclosure agreements are a thing. They are. So if if he had a non-disclosure agreement with Vallejo, and Vallejo he said... He certainly would have. For he would have, to right? So you're not allowed to tell anybody that we're doing this. You're not allowed to tell anybody the details of what we're doing. Okay, right. Maybe abstain from... Reviewing the competitor's product, which you are actively attempting to create a, a competing product against. Maybe. I assume this is a person with several thousand uh, subscribers, possibly Probably. a Patreon that rakes in a fair bit of money. Probably. Would it be uh, questionable in itself? Oh, how come you're not reviewing these new products and telling us what you think because we think you're a painting god? Hmm, possibly. Yes, it is a dirty great big conflict of interest if the timeline bears up that way. Yeah. But then to respond with abuse? Hmm. Oh, well, that, that kind that, of cements it. That doesn't say good things about the individual, as a matter of fact. Well, yeah, but some people actually like that in their uh, YouTube idols. I suppose. Very much brand loyalism. Oh. Loyalism to a YouTube brand as well as to a brand of product. To, to Fanboyism, which That's is it. weird. Well, it's not, it's not well, anything to do with anything other than the individual themselves, right? This is an yeah. individual insecurity. Identification with anything like that is an individual insecurity, you know. We went on earlier about that Ford versus Holden thing. Mm. These car companies don't give a shit. They really don't care. And yet people wrap their entire lives up about whether they're a Holden person or a Ford person. They don't care. They don't care that you've bought one of their cars. They only want you to buy the next one. Well, and all the merchandise that they level at. Yeah, absolutely. And the merchandising comes separately, but you know what I mean. It's like... I do. You know, are, are you a... You know, are you, are you a Bundy drinker or are you a Jack Daniels drinker? They don't care how much you've drunk in the past. They only care how much you're going to drink today and tomorrow. You know, and, yeah. and people get so hung up about the fact that, and they adorn their places with paraphernalia and, and you know, I've indulged in it as much as anybody else has. But the reality is, is that brand, lawyers, brand loyalty is about the individual, not about the company per se. The company wants to encourage it because, you know, repeat customs, good custom. But it... They're tapping into human psyche to get it, to, to make it happen. It's about the comfortable and the familiar. And this is why yourself. advertising works. Yeah, yeah, that's right. 
I tell you what, though, hmm? Army Painter's reaching out to, well, Army Painter has reached out to various YouTubers to help them with new speed paint colours. Mm -hmm. And that's really turned me off them. Yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck about the opinions of these people. Right. I'll make up my own damn mind, thank you very much. Yeah. And the proof is in the pudding. Mm-hmm. And they claim that they're changing the formulation to uh, reduce or eliminate the lead yeah. through, the reactivation, mm -hmm. which may be a good thing. Yep. Maybe. Maybe not. At the moment, I can't use them because... I can't predict what the reactivation is going to do, and so, and I, I don't want to have to take them outside, varnish them to bring them back in to continue working on them. So, from and it's a personal choice, right? It's like okay, so I'll use them in specific situations where I'm not going to be faced with the reactivation and leave them otherwise. Yeah, if fair enough. If they fix that particular issue then you know we'll give them a go and we'll have a look at uh, uh, you know they're a tool we, we want to use them for a specific job so i'll use them for the jobs that they're good for and don't use them for the jobs that they're not good for but you know standing on top of a soapbox and screaming about the opposition because i want to be identified as an army painter painter that's a pointless waste of time as far as i'm concerned or vice versa, you know what I mean. And get the Citadel fanboys that say, you know, the Citadel paints paint properly. It's like, piss off. They're a tool. You want to use as many different types as you possibly can to find what works best for you in certain circumstances. You know, that slavish loyalty to Citadel Games Workshop, that's rife. Yeah, it really and, is. And they encourage it. Of course. No one would buy their products otherwise. Uh, <laughs> pay those prices for them. That's the thing. Like, let, let's face it, Citadel do the, the best miniatures in the world from the perspective of the technical accomplishment of them and the quality of the... Even the quality of the stuff that they did 15 years ago is still, you know, at the yeah. leading edge of what is available on the market. And they are a miniature manufacturer. They want to sell miniatures. The whole game lines and everything like that just came as supporting. But they they went from a a, a local shop that stocked every manufacturer and everything. They went to the well, no, we don't want to make these other people money. We want to keep all of that money for ourselves. So we'll fill the shop with only our own product and encourage people to keep coming back to us and buying only our own product. And they've continued that mantra ever since. And it's a business model, and it's the one they've chosen. Yeah, long since gone are the days where White Dwarf reviewed everything under the sun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hard to believe now. Uh, yeah. When, you know, they they lawyered up into the 90s, into the 2000s, and went absolutely after everybody with a stick. You know, to, to beat themselves a, a clear patch in the ground. It's a business model. Don't agree with it. Don't buy their shit. The reality is, is that they still produce some of the best miniatures in the world, and so sometimes it's very difficult to keep walking. Mm. But this is the other point. The point is, is that they have to. If they stop producing the best miniatures in the world, they'll die very fast. Because people suddenly realise that the price point is just not compelling anymore. Yep. <clears throat> C 
sixty bucks for a noise marine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Gee, Corvus isn't mean, far behind. No, true, and they're probably feeling a bit of the same. Um, the thing about Corvus Belly is, it's a much, much, much smaller company. Mm. And so their margins are much, much, much tighter. And they do produce all their own stuff in-house. Like, you know, it's not farmed out to Chinese factories or anything like that. So from that perspective, made in Spain is made in Spain. (coughs) And again, they're the best 28mm medals in the world. For quality. But once they stop being that, oh boy. They've also realised that they've got all their eggs in one basket too. And so they're trying to diversify. That's where Warcrow's coming from. They're trying to start a completely new game line. To um, try and diversify a little bit because, you know, Infinity will only go so far. Mm. Not everybody wants anime-inspired science fiction skirmish game. Yeah, well, I was going to say, I mean, even if GW or Corvus Belly are the best at what they do in the world, miniatures-wise, mm. you still got to want them. That's right. It's fine being the best if it's not something, if it's something you're interested in. What if I don't happen to be interested in 28 or 32 mil? What if I happen to be interested in something else? <laughs> a 15 for us. Or yeah. 10 or a... <laughs> 6 or 2. <laughs> you no, know, I think 2 is a bit too small for me. <laughs> <laughs> 6 is a bit small. Um, Luckily yeah. for us, because the industry at this point in time is the best it's ever been from the perspective of availability and variety, mm. there's likely to be somebody out there who also has that interest that you have and is producing something for it. And they might be boutique and it, you know, it might be expensive because it's boutique, but it's available. You know, the thing about it is, is that the industry just simply wouldn't exist. The, the, the way that it is today wouldn't exist without Games Workshop and Citadel. You know, they have a huge percentage of the marketplace and <clears throat> and everyone who's not part of that marketplace is a disaffected former customer possibly <laughs> there are very 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 few people that that are in gaming that don't have a workshop product they exist but they're very by far the minority you know well, that's what i mean like mm. statistically insignificant numbers mm-hmm And I'm saying you really said for tabletop RPGs as well. Mm-hmm. Just replace, you know, D and D has row with GW and same problem. Same problem. There's a game out there for everyone's tastes, but people just play five E because they don't know any better. That's right. Or they can't get off the, the roundabout. Which is one of the reasons why I'm trying to get these people to start playing Earth Dawn. Mm-hmm. I highly doubt it will result in many sales of the product, which is, you know, not my point anyway, but I just wanted to try and help some of these people break free of the 5e <laughs> mindset. The, the 5e mindset, yeah. And it's a good game system. It should be played more. I wouldn't be doing a podcast on with 
these games if I didn't think it was a good system. Yeah. You wouldn't be wasting your time. Yeah. All my money. <laughs> I kind of feel the same way about Flames of War. You know, people play Flames of War because it's Flames of War. But, you know, the, the two Fat Lardy systems covering the same historical period are significantly better events from the perspective of the the enjoyment of the participants. But getting people off the Flames of War roundabout, you know, Flames of War is just second edition 40k played with World War Two miniatures. <laughs> Realistically. You know, that whole I go, you go thing, you know? It's like, I yeah. go, I wipe out half your army. You go, oh well, sucks to be you. Should have had the first turn. <laughs> and Grant says, Dan, with the mic drop. Clunk. That's a good thing. What is? The mic drop. Hmm. Except you haven't walked off stage. Which is usually what follows. That's how gene stealers versus marines work. What's that? I shoot first, you die. End no, of no. Game. Yeah, well, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let's play a game of Space Hulk sometime. Where it's like, you shoot, shoot the first gene stealer, kill it. You shoot the second one, kill it. Shoot the third one, kill it. Shoot the fourth one, kill it. The 5th, 6th, 7th and 8th come and eat you. There's always more gene stealers. Space Hawk's actually really tough for the Marines to win. <laughs> if you know what you're doing as a gene stealer player, I mean. I remember an amusing episode when we were playing. We had three or four sets of space all stuck together in this gigantic map, and we had four or five squads of marines and gene stealers all over the place. And we ended up we were down to one one librarian, and because we had four or five sets worth of command points, <laughs> just giving them all to the one librarian. <laughs> this librarian was scorching rubber down these corridors, moving something like 18 or 20 squares a turn or something. It was a very, very funny. Fastest librarian ever. So Grant elaborated the comments uh, about the Marines and Gene Steelers. It was uh, two turns of Marine shooting, then two turns of Gene Steeler hand to hand. Right. <laughs> Which makes sense. And he laughs at the good old days of Space Hulk. Yep. We've got a completely painted set of 2009 Space Hulk here. Completely painted. Has the video dropped out again? Whoa. It has. Nearly. No. I just heard the bonging notification. You'll get some more ads in a minute. Yeah, here we go. It's the creepy little girl again. Thanks, New Scorp. This is really the thing you want to be showing to bloody impressionable teenage idiots. Mm. Oh, look, something else I don't want. Alienware PCs. Mm. Talk about paying a two thousand dollar markup for a badge. Yes. Yeah, Twitch is being a pain in the behind today, Grant. Mm -hmm. Second drop out. Second drop out. Watch the video on demand version on YouTube and you'll get all of the witty commentary. <laughs> Maybe, probably. 
and the fabulous subtitles. Well, yeah, the subtitles are pretty great. Although they do take a couple of hours to generate. I didn't see him when I watched that video back. It said subtitles are not available, so... Yeah, they could take up to 48 hours for YouTube to generate them. I mean, even with their vast amounts of computing power, they still take time to auto-subtitle. Mm. Whoever programmed that thing is goddamn genius, really. Even with all of its hilarities, to transcribe voice like that was just, yeah. And to do it automatically and relatively accurately. Mm -hmm. and those sure, we've got, yeah, we've got difficult access to deal with. But those algorithms are getting better and better all the time. Yeah, well, the one that uh, auto transcribes for some of the news channels that upload to YouTube is, you know, almost picture perfect. Hmm. Word letter perfect. Almost. It helps when the news readers are being through training to enunciate. <laughs> yeah. And we're just. Being lost in school. We're just. And for us, it's early morning and not, <laughs> not enough caffeine stimulated. <laughs> <laughs> and we're Australian. And we're gamers. That's stick number six. I reckon I'll get through the boots and call it. Fair enough. So what's on after the Earth Dawn game? Lunch, I hope. Mm. <laughs> Lunch. Yeah, I plan to um, crash and burn, I think. <laughs> Great plan. Whereas I have to go out into the yard and wrangle the back lawn. All that rain makes the grass grow. Yes. You could do what my old man did. Salted. Very nearly. <laughs> he thought he was using a um, weed sprayer. Right. Like, uh, he was using a weed, a garden sprayer. He thought mm -hmm. he'd put Roundup in it. Put zero in it instead mm. on accident, he claims. Right. Killed off everything in the backyard. Right. Then proceeded to make the same mistake on my sister's house that she was renting at the time. Right. Which cost her a small fortune from the landlord. Right. How come all of the grass in the yard is dead? Oh, uh, weed sprayed it. <laughs> right. Uh, well, that's going to take forever and is a nice expense to resod. Doing it once, yeah, okay, maybe. Mm -hmm. Doing it twice. Mm. He'll never admit to anything. No. No, I've got overlong grass to mow. Let's face it, there isn't that much of it, but it'll take three passes starting with a, a high setting on the lawnmower and working my way down because otherwise it'll just end up a bloody mess. Mm. And then I've got to go around the house with a ladder and empty the gutters. Because all the leaves from all the trees in the front are all accumulated. 
and we have enough stormwater issues without adding that to it. <laughs> yeah, true. I have a feeling that the nasty storm season isn't over in Melbourne yet. No. But Joe pointed out, fair. when we got out the front yesterday, she pointed out the weeds growing in the gutters at the front. And I'm like, mm hmm. Sorry, you were saying? Well, it's all good to point out the weeds. Are you going to do anything about them? I don't want to let her near a ladder. <laughs> it's like letting her near sharp knives. It's just a recipe for disaster. I thought she was good in the kitchen. She is. But you should see her hands. That's uh, normally a price to pay. Yeah, okay, fair enough. And the last thing I want her doing is doing a bloody Molly Meldrum impersonation. Ooh. Because that would be bad. Just bad. Grant's got grass growing his gut in his gutters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, yes, I'm not a fan of ladders here, though. Not at my weight. Water doesn't flow terribly well where there's grass growing. Generally, God, it's probably not performing terribly well. Uh, apparently, it can be reached. So I guess that's good. The grass? Well, that's the gist of the comment. Right. So he has very low gutters. Yeah. Or a really, really high retaining wall backing up next to him. Mm. No, sadly, I have to get a ladder out. It should be okay, except the little shed is chock full of crap at the moment. How's the big shed going? Well, it's been up for a year now. It has. I had to move a bunch of things yesterday so that I could get to the laser cutter because <laughs> what's being used is a temporary storage space. But, um, I ran the laser cutter for a good four hours yesterday. Took the water temperature from a starting 18 degrees to 27 degrees. Funny how hot things get hot. <laughs> yeah. I need to put a big water reservoir on that, I think. As summer comes in, because otherwise I won't be able to cut. It's like the old kid song. I built the shed to store stuff. I don't know why I bought the stuff. Advertising. Just to go full circle. Mm hmm. Not that we ever do this. It has been a little while, though. Mm hmm. Still chuckling about what happens when you paint the last model. 
<laughs> the world gets shoved off its axis. Catastrophic. Oh, well, there we go. Eight sticks of boots. Have to go back over another load of black to do the shakos. Oh, I think their backpacks are black too. Need to check that. It's the time. Twenty two. 22. So that's only 20 minutes short. Don't think anybody will right. notice. Just don't say anything. My lips are sealed. <laughs> ah, the go goes. Grant reckons it's a sign of the apocalypse getting that last miniature painted. Absolutely. Right up there with brimstone and the fire from the sky and the works. Plagues of locusts, no doubt. And every time somebody says the word brimstone, it immediately pops into my head, if it were me, donkey, you'd be dead. Just, I don't know, I have a total Shrek association with the word brimstone. I don't, but I've never seen that movie the whole way through. Oh, really? Yeah. Doesn't do anything for you? Wasn't my age group, and I'm not a great Mike Myers fan anyway. No, fair enough. It, um, yeah. It's a pretty good film, in my opinion. It ticks the boxes for what it was supposed to be. Oh, it did well enough to get a couple of sequels. Yeah. Which, as they should, got progressively worse. Oh, I saw something else that was really funny the other day. It was a, a meme that said that um, breaking news that George Lucas is set to direct the sequel to Rogue One. It's due for release in cinemas on 25th of May 1977. It's going to be called A New Hope. <laughs> <laughs> There's your dad joke. <laughs> Come on, Grant, top that. In lieu of a dad joke, I have an Andrew Denton quote to finish when right. it's time. Now's the time, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. We all wait in breathless silence. This is what baited breath is. Yeah, that's the word for it. Damn it, just as soon as it's come up, <laughs> get a system notification right over the top of it as I go to read it. Mm. A bogan is the type of man whose idea of conversation is to fart and the idea of wit is to light it. Right. <laughs> Why do I know so many people like that? No comment. Mm.
Lots of people never True, progress though. Be beyond the mental age of 14. Lots of people. Grant says, suggests it's because you work in IT. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I seem to recall saying one day that the perfect IT manager was a kindergarten teacher. Um, don't recall that going down terribly well. I've said a lot of things in my time as a software engineer that haven't gone down very well. I guess that's why I got made redundant. <laughs> Don't rock the boat. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for another enjoyable session. I shall go and assuage my stomach's uh, complaint. Have a good yeah, game, Matty. Hope it goes well. Thanks. Yeah, me too. I'm going to use these 15 minutes to caffeinate and hydrate and uh, relieve some pressure on the bladder. Yes, good plan. Um, see you guys next week. Cheers. Yeah, take care of yourself.